Well, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. This is Dartisan's episode four. This week, we have very special guests, the Dart editor team and Phil Quitzlin. Hi, Phil. How's it going? Great. Hey, Seth. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I've been seeing a lot of releases from the Dart editor team, and uh, you guys are cranking. So I'm, I'm sure everyone's going to be excited to see what you've what you've got uh, working in the latest builds. Uh, see the demo we're going to go into shortly, and then hear a little bit about where you're going with the editor. So I really appreciate it, and uh, I think we we should get started with a really cool demo. I know you've got some stuff to show off. So uh, are you ready to show us what's latest and greatest in the editor there? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Share your yeah. screen away. All right. All right. We're good. We're good? OK, yeah. great. So one of the first things that you'll notice after launching the editor is a welcome page. And the welcome page uh, features a, a host of samples. And those samples are there to help you get started with Dart and get started with the editor. So, so that's just as good a, starting off, a jumping off point as any. So let, let's dive into my, my favorite sample is clock. Uh, so let's jump into that. So when you click the clock sample on the welcome page, it will bring the clock application into the editor, uh, ready for you to ready for you to play with. And um, you'll you'll notice quickly on the left hand side in the files view, uh, we have a new folder, and in it we have a bunch of resources. One thing that's worth mentioning: this is sort of a, a new feature for folks that have been using the editor for a while. Um, we just recently added uh, some new emphasis. You'll notice that clock.dart is emphasized in bold here. And the reason for that is that clock.dart is essentially the entry point of this application. It's, it's a library. And it turns out that um, in non-trivial applications, just this little bit of emphasis is really useful to help folks navigate. Um, so here's, so we've opened up the source, but uh, we kind of want to see what this thing does. So luckily, with the Dart editor, it's very easy to get, get up and running. So to run this application, we just go over to the run tool item in the toolbar, or alternatively, we go to the tools menu and select run. And then uh, as quickly as that, we have a running Dart application. And what's worth pointing out about this is that this is running, um, you'll see over here, we're launching clock in a, in in a special build of Chromium, the Chromium browser that includes the Dart VM. So this is actually running, running on the Dart VM in Chromium. So, so that's all fine and well. Let, let's, to give you some kind of sense for what it's like to actually work with Dart, let's, let's introduce sort of a simple edit. Now, I, I happen to know a little bit about this code, so I know kind of where I'm going. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to change the speed of the, these bouncing balls. So to do that, I'm going to navigate to a class called balls. And the way to do, one quick and easy way to do that is through the search box. So if you go to the search box and start typing, it will refine your results to, you know, to, to match what you've typed. So I'm going to navigate to the balls type. And now once I've opened this in the editor, um, the next thing I want to do is I want to navigate to a particular member. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the quick outline view, which is a kind of handy overlay, which you can, on the Mac, it's, it's option open, or with this context menu click. Uh, and there's, the, there's the method I'm looking for. It's called tick. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to change the way that this delta is getting calculated. So let's, let's change it a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to click Save, go back to my browser, and it's a simple matter of reloading the browser to see the effect of my change. Oh, very slow. I think actually I'm feeling a little more hyper than that. So let's change it and reload. So that's the, that's the edit refresh cycle for, um, for with, with, with the Dart editor and running, running in Chromium. And we're hoping is that people will be delighted with how quick it is to kind of test out changes. Well, now, now, now that we have a file open in the editor, um, I want to kind of draw, draw your attention to some of the things that we've done in the editor to help make, make you an effective uh, Dart programmer. Um, so first of all, unsurprisingly, uh, the editor will give you some feedback when you've gone completely off the rails. So for instance, if we introduce a syntax error here um, and save it, you'll notice at the bottom we get 
we get a bunch of we get a bunch of errors. So so that's useful. Uh, more subtly and and more interestingly, uh, will give us some feedback when we've done kind of unhappy things with types. So this is one of the places where, where Dart really shines and the editor can, can really kind of piggyback on, on that feature of the language. So last time we happen to know is an int, and if we assign a string to an int, you would expect a warning, and indeed, and indeed we, we get one. Um, now, once we have types, uh, we can do other interesting things to, to kind of help you, help you be a productive programmer. So since we know last time is an int, you would hope that the tool would be able to do something with that. Um, and sure enough, it can, and it can, it can calculate some pretty, some pretty constructive code completion uh, proposals. So since last time is an int, we can um, you know, complete all valid uh, methods on ints. So, so, that's, so, so that, that is really, really useful, and I think folks that are coming from, you know, from other, uh, well, from typed languages like Java, for instance, are going to take that kind of for granted, but this is very useful in the context of, well, coming over from JavaScript, this is a, a kind, of, kind of refreshing. Um, so I think, that's, I think that's what I want to point out about, about the sample. Um, you know, next, you're probably wondering what it's like to build your own apps, and, and to do that, uh, let's first let's close this. And to create an application uh, with the Dart editor, you simply go to the file menu, select new application, we'll come up with a wizard, and this wizard will uh, will generate some sample content for us. So let's make a web app. And here we have a very simple, very simple web app. Um, if I could only type. The editor does not make you a better typist, unfortunately. Okay, so, and once again, we can just run it like this. Very good. So I, I mentioned a couple of things that you can do to navigate, and I want to point out one more while we're while we're here. Uh, uh, if you if you hold down the command key. This will give us a kind of a, a very handy affordance for opening the declarations of types inside the inside the editor pane. So when I hold down the command key and hover, uh, I can hop around, but but more excitingly, I can drill into externally externally defined types and interfaces. So this is uh, this is something that comes in the bundled libraries, the string interface, and we can hop right to it. Uh, similarly, we can do that. We can hop around inside here. Now it's worth noting you'll. You'll notice what's happened on the left-hand side in the files view is we've expanded this, this kind of synthetic node, which points off to the to the bundled SDK libraries. So obviously you can navigate this. It's useful maybe to navigate this to get some kind of a sense for how the SDK libraries are are structured. Another way to to zoom around and take a look at SDK libraries, of course, is through the search box. So if you happen to know, you're guessing likely that there's you know, some HTML-related classes and. Here we can kind of zoom into zoom into one of them. Um, okay, so uh, before we open for questions, I, I want to point out a few more a few more kind of launching options. So uh, up until this point, we've just been running things in the Dartium in in the context of the the Dartium browser, so running on the VM. But you may be interested to note that we can also uh, run things just as well uh, as as JavaScript apps. So we'll create a new launch. So the way that we did that, sorry, um, you can go to Tools, Manage Launches. This will open this wizard. You can create a new launch, and this time we're going to choose a Dart Web launch, and we'll call it Webby. We need to select. What the HTML file is an entry point, and we're going to use the system the system browser, apply it, and run it. And what's happening here, you'll see in the console, we're now we're generating JavaScript, and we're opening that file in in this case in Safari because that's what I've chosen as my default browser. Um, also worth noting, when we look at these launches, you may have noticed and folks who have been playing with the editor, this is, this is a bit of a teaser. There are a few other options when you launch. And one thing that I kind of want to just 
point out very quickly, many folks on, on Dart and Esk have, have discovered that there's some early debugging support. Um, and while we aren't turning it on by default, I think it's already, it's already fully baked enough to be pretty useful. So let me just quickly demo what that looks like. So going back to our original Webby launch configuration, um, we enable debugging. Uh, you can just apply it. You can run it. Um, and now let's set a breakpoint. So setting a breakpoint is a simple matter of double clicking in this the gutter here. Now we have a breakpoint set here. Um, I suppose we want to run it again. And when we run it, you'll notice that uh, this debugger panel has opened up. We're stopped where we expect to be, and you'll notice that values are propagated to the view. And you can actually get them also by, by hovering over. And as you would expect in a debugger, you can, you can just click resume. Um, finally, I should point out there was one other option that uh, you may have noticed. So earlier I pointed out that we get these warnings. And you'll notice this is not strictly an error in Dart. But you can run the VM, or you can connect to the VM in checked mode. And when you do that, uh, it gets a, little bit, gets a little bit more strict. And in that case, what we should see here in our console is a stack trace. Um, because in this case, we're saying this is this, uh, that, that assignment is we're going to treat that as an error at one time. OK. Um, that, that's about it that I had, uh, Seth, for the kind of for the CAN demo. Do we want to switch over to, to some questions? Yeah, thanks, Phil. Go ahead and pop off um, your screen share in there. Awesome. So for everyone who's just joined us, this is Dartisans episode four. We have special guests, the Dart editor team from Portland, who's just finished up a demo. And uh, this is all being recorded, so if you missed the demo, you'll be able to see it on YouTube. It's very, very slick. We saw debugging. We saw warnings. We saw launching into da uh, Dartium. A lot of good stuff. So thank you, Phil. Um, so why don't we take just a second to introduce yourself. Um, I, I, you, I know you guys were in Portland, but uh, Who's there with you in the room, and wh what have you guys been doing, and what kind of led you to Dart Editor? Sure. Yeah. Well, so I'll 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 I'll, uh, I'll start. So I'm Phil Quitzland. I work on the Dart Editor team in in sunny Portland, um, and uh, before have been working kind of in the Eclipse in the Eclipse plugin space for a long time, doing doing uh, tooling primarily for Java and and Java extensions. I was in academia for a while doing programming language research and language tools, and uh, have happily found my way uh, onto the Dart team and, and doing similar similar kinds of things uh, with the Dart editor. And my my kind of focus on the editor has been has been search has been a has been a big part of my focus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we saw a demo of that. Very cool. Who who's behind you back there? <coughs> um, hi. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm Devin Crew. Um, um, and I worked uh, worked with Phil uh, at Instantiations um, uh, before Google. And um, previous to that, uh, I worked at a couple of companies in Boston uh, on uh, work writing Java virtual machines. Um, and uh, uh, mostly on the editor, I've been working on uh, debugging and launch support, um, which you saw a little a little bit of. Um, so if you find any bugs in uh, debugging, you can send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Devin. Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Kirti, and um, uh, I'm also part of the team that came over from Instantiations. I've been working with, Me these, too. Yeah. with these folks for a while now, um, mainly doing Eclipse and um, Java productivity tools, and now uh, working on the Dart editor. So um, I've been working with, with Devin, and I've been working on the debugging and launching story for a while now. Uh, well, thanks everyone for taking the time. I, I keep hearing this word eclipse over and over. Uh, can you tell us just a little bit about instantiations? Because I think that's an interesting story about how, what, how we actually got here. And then the question that we always get is, so is this thing eclipse? So can you help kind of demystify what we just saw? Right. Well, maybe well, let's, let's start with the last part that you asked. I mean, so, so as Kirti said with, at instantiations that you know, our, our bread and butter was building productivity tools built, built on eclipse. And so our our primary customers there were folks that were using the Eclipse platform and all of its grandness. Now, what we're trying to do with the Dart editor is kind of 
kind of parlay some of our experience in, in the larger Eclipse community, uh, one of the kind of, I think, a, a bit, there are some pain points, especially for novice users, so for kind of end users who uh, picked up Eclipse, they found it sometimes kind of threatening and a little bit overly large. So what we've been striving to do with the Dart Editor is build something with a smaller, just sort of a smaller UX footprint and just streamlined a little bit and, and kind of emphasizing just a, just a uh, I don't know, kind of a kinder, gentler, more streamlined user experience, um, which is not to denigrate Eclipse at all. I think that we're, we're trying to really kind of focus this effort on, on a clean and, clean and simple and small and not, not open. So Eclipse is this kind of great open architecture, and their Dart Editor is much more curated. Well, I think the key there is the word editor. We, we don't really call it an IDE because I think that implies a different kind of experience, and, and we're very focused on an editor. What would an editor focused on Dart look like and feel like and act like, and, that, and that's what you guys are building? Right, right. Uh, the other question we always get, uh, so is this ever going to turn into a plugin? Um, what's, what's the story behind a plugin? How did we not write a plugin? How did we end up at a kind of a standalone editor? Anybody else want to answer that one? I, I can I can answer it, but hey. um, I yeah I think that um, <clears throat> initially we we were very concerned with the UX um, user experience of of uh, our tooling, and that definitely led us to the road road of this of uh, a curated smaller version of a, you know of an editor, um, where especially new users have a good on ramp um, uh, a good experience. And um, I would say largely we, we haven't done a plug-in version because of bandwidth reasons um, that <clears throat> if we try and concentrate on too much, uh, you're not able to perform well on, on what you're, you're, you're trying to do, what's most important. Um, and, uh, and, and we have had requests for plug-in versions, a plug-in version of the editor, um, Dart plugins, and, uh, and, and we may introduce them at some point, but I think that's mostly to do with what other things we would be prioritizing about that, you know, what, where we'd be putting our effort. So. Right. No, I, I, I think that's great. I, I, should, I should just add one, it, you made me realize one thing that I meant to demo is that in the application we have, have a feedback mechanism and, and we hope that people take advantage of that to give us feedback just like this. There also obviously is the public bug tracker. Uh, at Dart Bugs and, um, and there is, like Devin said, there's, there is an open ticket uh, that has had some kind of interesting activity on it. So if folks if folks want to kind of explore that issue any further, they're welcome to chime in. Welcome to chime in there. But yeah, yeah, and 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 to add to what Phil said, um, we we have changed uh, uh, the behavior of the editor based on user feedback. We had a a different type of explorer, a navigator, um, for uh, for your code, and and based on you know a significant amount of user feedback, we changed it to a different a different style from the library view to the files view. And if we saw enough feedback on various issues, um, we would, you know, definitely uh, take that into account and probably change what we were doing. So. Right. <clears throat> yeah, and we definitely appreciate that. And, and you touched on it before. There's a send back feedback mechanism in the editor. But the editor, just like the entire Dart project, is open source. And so you can go to dartbug.com, uh, file your experiences, ask for new features, file bugs, or use the send feedback. Uh, the team listens and triages to all these issues. And so we, we definitely appreciate that. This is uh, the editor's technology preview, just like the rest of the project. And thing, things, are, things are being refactored uh, every week based on the feedback we get. So we definitely appreciate right. that. Patch is welcome. Yes, definitely. Uh, let's take a question from the moderator here. Sure. This question is uh, the top question is voted by our uh, listeners. What are the future plans for supporting other languages, um, or at least syntax highlighting and co quote completion uh, for things like HTML, CSS, or Go? What, where do you see the editor fitting in with at least HTML and CSS? Um, well, that's interesting. You can you can kind of speak to that. I know that that's a very that's that's a very hotly requested. Um, yeah. Um, I don't. Yeah, I would definitely say HTML and CSS is on our near term. I don't, I don't think Go is on the strategy right now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we've had requests for it, and, and exactly for simple stuff like syntax highlighting, it makes a big difference. It makes it easier to read the code, um, and uh, and we actually have some code for that, 
which is not completed. So I think it'll land, you know, in the next few weeks. Um, Great, yeah, thank you. Especially as Dart, first and foremost, is a modern structured web programming language. I think that's going to get a lot of usage out of that. Uh, here's another question from the moderator. And for everyone watching, uh, feel free to join the Hangout. And I believe I shared it to all the extended circles there. So we love live questions, so, so don't be shy. Uh, this next question, MVC or MV MVP web application scaffold generator? That sounds like a feature request. If Google's building GWT-like framework in Dart, uh, which we definitely are looking at what does the UI stack or UI app stack look like for Dart, then a GUI-based model creator for App Engine SQL and NoSQL backend would be really interesting. So I think what this question is really saying is, how far do you see the editor going? Uh, right now we saw a lot of cool stuff about the syntax and launching and debugging, but at some point we'll introduce an app stack and People compile their Dart apps into JavaScript and deploy that, you know, up to App Engine. Kind of, where's your head at, and how far do you think that editor is going to go? Yeah. Well, I mean, my, you know, so, so I, I think what Devin said earlier, um, you know, about kind of a plug-in version of the editor is exactly right. I mean, I, I think we're, I think we're entire, it's, it's entirely a matter of bandwidth. Um, I can't imagine that we wouldn't, that we, I mean, I don't know. I think. Is the, the more opinionated the kind of the Dart team gets about a UI app stack, um, the, the so, and the sooner we have you know a, a real story for that, um, you know the sooner we can start kind of building our tooling around it. But again, I think that I, I think that's just a matter of interest and bandwidth. But I can't imagine that we wouldn't want to do that. I mean, it sounds very exciting. Um, but again, I, I also encourage this should be translated into a into a feature request mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. put on the public tracker. So. I'd like to kind of turn it back to some of the stuff that we saw you demoing the editor. Uh, you showed that if type annotations uh, exist in the code, that the editor can give you warnings. Uh, we also saw an error from something you, you did, you checked for checked mode. Can you just take a minute and explain uh, the differences between what the editor and just really what the Dart system considers warnings and errors and check mode? And can, can you de demystify all this a little bit? Because I know that. If you add these static type annotations to your code, the editor really, like a lot of these cool features turn on. Um, talk to us a little bit about just what are warnings, what are errors, and how do they manifest themselves? Anybody else want to take that one? Uh, I, I'll jump in here for yeah. a little bit. Okay, um, yeah, I'll, I'll pick up after but, that. Uh, <laughs> but I am not a Dart language expert uh, by any means. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, generally um, the type annotations uh, um, in some places on your Dart code, it, uh, basically you, we don't want the types to affect the runtime behavior. They're there more as a, uh, as, as helpful uh, hints to the user. Um, so if you see a warning, it means that this is probably incorrect, but um, the, the VM and the uh, browser are going to run it, <coughs> execute it just fine. Whereas an error is more like your code is, is we're not compiling, but it wouldn't compile um, traditionally, and it, it will not run correctly. Um, so that's sort of the when you see a, the difference in a warning and an error. Yeah. Um, so um, are you guys? Yeah. Yes. Eric. Oh yeah. I was going to say. Um, so it's really not even that straightforward. Uh, sometimes even when uh, the editor is showing an error, uh, the VM will actually execute code somewhere up until that point. So the, the definition of a compile time error in Dart just means that you won't be able to execute the code and you won't be able to catch an exception and keep going. So um, th that's the real difference between a, a warning and an error. Uh, <clears throat> warnings, you can turn on check mode. But if you put a try catch block around them, it throws a special kind of type exception that could be caught. Um, I don't recommend coding like that, but this is uh, some, something that we do in our unit tests, for example. So uh, the real point of the, the warnings is to give people who want the extra safety of types a way to do uh, type safety without letting types get in the way of people who don't use the type system or are casually using it. 
So, for example, uh, you showed uh, assigning an int to a string and everything working fine. If you want to write code that uses duct typing, where you have an object that implements some fields, and you assign it to another object that has some of those same fields, and you access only those fields, everything works, everything works fine. It's just the warnings that would get in the way. I hope that clarified and not confused people. No, that's great. And Eric, can you introduce yourself real briefly? Oh yeah, sorry. I'm Eric. I'm uh, I'm work on the Dart editor team now, and I've been working on the static analyzer, and part of the um, and as a, as a part of the old Dart comp Dart C team. And uh, previous to that, um, at Google, I worked on the Google Web Toolkit and maps bindings for Google Web Toolkit. Thanks, Eric. And I should probably point out the static analyzer is what's looking through all the code as you type it and as you save it and generates those yellow squigglies. So that's what's looking through it and using the language spec and, and giving you those warnings early on. I think that that's really where you start to see the power of type annotations pay off is in, is in the editor. I mean, the editor is where the users actually interact with the system. So you add those types and you get these early warnings, you catch those bugs early, that's, that to me is where the power really starts to kick in. So right. I appreciate well, that. Yeah, and also, I mean, in the, ty the type annotations also make it much, much easier for us to, to propose, you know, kind of intelligent completions. Mm -hmm. Now, I think on the, on the, I can't make any promises about a time frame, but I know folks are very interested in adding some, adding some basic type inferencing. So, so I, I think, um, Depending depending on how far we want to go with that, you know, hopefully in hopefully in the not so long term, you'll start to see some some code completion in places where there isn't an explicit type. On the other hand, it kind of gives you some nice gives you some nice encouragement to use types. So uh, I think I think it'll be interesting to see what kind of culture culture grows around the types and how many people really leverage the optional types. But that still remains to be seen. Uh, thanks, Phil. That was exactly the next question from Adam in San Francisco. Was uh, when do you think, or can the Dart editor handle at least uh, lo local uh, type inference? And so it's good to see that that's on the radar because uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we were we were just talking about that. So like a, a kind of an idiom that seems to be kind of growing. Well, something that people are kind of trying on here is the notion of of types at, at types at all the boundaries. So having all of your interfaces well typed. So for in, so more specifically, like if you have a method declaration. You wouldn't have any vars in the signature; those would all be those would all be typed. But in the body of your method, you may you 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 may not use types, right? So that that affords you some flexibility. Uh, and but that being said, if you want to do type inference in that context, that's much that's much easier than than global type inference, where where you have to where you have to do an analysis that reaches further out of that out of that scope. So I think I think that yeah I don't know I mean I I know. Brian isn't here. Brian's the one who's been thinking most deeply about about what type inferencing for the editor would would look like. But uh, I think folks are very are very keen to have that happen because I think that would be hugely valuable to users and Adam at least. Yes. Well, with so many people from the Dart team here joining us, which is it's really rare treat. I'm I'm kind of curious to turn it around and what are some of the things that you as the editor team would like to know more about. Uh, from the, our Dart users out there. There's a whole bunch of people using the editor and the language and libraries and this is, a, this is a good chance for you guys to ask your own questions that people can either respond here in the moderator or the hangout or just when they file bugs or, or join the mailing list. What is it that you guys want to know? Anything curious? Hmm. Dan, you want to chime in? Yeah, you say <clears throat> definitely um, feature requests, where, where you're getting roadblocked, um, how we can help you understand the language uh, quickly, um, bugs you're running into, the, that, all those sort of typical uh, product-centric, product-realized uh, questions that can help drive us and determine where should we should spend our time in the short term. Uh, with that, I want to say hi, Dan. How are you? Howdy. Can you introduce yourself real briefly? I'm the TL for the Dart Editor project. Long, I've been working on uh, Eclipse plugins for 10 plus years, working with the uh, guys in Portland um, doing that. So all prior to Google and um, now part of the Dart Editor team. 
That, I, I feel so lucky. I, I really feel like we're the right guys building this uh, project. You guys have been doing uh, these kind of uh, editors and IDEs and frameworks for a long time, so I, I, think, I think we're lucky to have you guys working on it. Um, I'm, Dan, I'm going to put you on the spot for just real briefly here. One of the things that we're hearing about and uh, we love to hear is that people are using Dart for some fairly large non-trivial projects. Um, some public, not some, some private, but uh, some of the, they've been running into kind of slower analysis times with the editor. I know you've been thinking about ways to uh, make that better. Can you talk just a little bit about what you've seen and any kind of thoughts on, on the future of the of analysis and speed? Um, sp speed is definitely, performance is definitely of interest to us, obviously. Um, we're addressing larger and larger programs. Um, it's the basic things. We need to speed up the analysis itself and do uh, performance analysis there, address the hot spots. We need, we're putting in place caching so that um, things are not analyzed multiple times, cache whatever we can. Um, in addition, uh, Phil's uh, added and Brian has added some logic so that you can exclude certain areas and focus so that if, even if you open up a, a large number of a large tree, a, a large directory tree, um, you can focus editor on a particular area and say only analyze you know, this small portion of it. So we're looking at things both from an automated standpoint and from a user driven standpoint to uh, improve performance. Great. Thanks, Dan. And we'll, and we'll keep encouraging our community to uh, send us more, more specific uh, use cases and scenarios, because I, I know we definitely appreciate to, to see what those projects look like. That, that helps us get to the root even quicker. So we appreciate the community feedback there. Yeah, this is uh, Eric again. And uh, I was just, uh, we were talking to some usability people saying that users are having trouble interpreting some of the warnings and errors. And I was just kind of putting out a plea to get more specific um, instances of those to see if we could help people uh, by making the messages better, basically. Great, thank you, Eric. That's that's awesome. Uh, so please, you don't uh, use our bug tracking system not just for bugs or explicit feature requests. You can also use the send feedback button and our and our mailing list and our dartbug.com just to send your general thoughts and experiences. We we love to hear that. We can put the the pieces together and make it even better. So thanks, Eric, for for offering to do that. Hi, Brandon. Did you have a question for the Dart editor team? I don't have a question. I, I thought I'd lurk. I saw the request come across. I, could, I couldn't help myself. Cool. Awesome. Well, welcome. Lurk away. Lurk away. That's right. Yeah, you guys are doing some awesome work. Well, thanks. Thank you. We've got just about uh, I don't know five or six minutes left, and uh, something that it was kind of a teasing hint I want to end on um, with the, one of the latest announcements for the Dart editor team was uh, local uh, rename refactoring support. And I think uh, that is going to be really awesome. Can you t spend a few minutes talking about what's your vision there and what's what's coming down maybe in the next couple releases uh, with regards to refactoring? As our um, local analysis improves and again type inferencing sort of in that area. Um, one of the first simple things is rename. Um, beyond that, um, all of think all of the typical Java uh, Eclipse related refactorings. We would like to see as many as we can. We'll just take them as we have time. Um, extract method, inline, extract local, etc. But again, we have to do the bread and butter things first. Performance, stability. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dan. I think I'm, I'm personally very excited for the refactoring support, so looking forward to that one. Well, and I think, I mean, there's, there's a lot of incentive to do it, right? Because I think that one, one of the things that obviously is on our mind as we're building this tool is that we, we want to emphasize all the ways that Dart kind of distinguishes itself from, well, you know, let's, you know, the elephant in the room is JavaScript, right? So there are lots of things that are very challenging to do uh, in JavaScript. And I think are still, you know, so rename in Dart is, is not a piece of cake either because of, because of the typing story. Um, but 
but I think that's something that we're really keen to do and keen to get right. I think there are some interesting UX challenges there. So beyond just the analysis, I think we need to come up with some, you know, potentially some innovative ways to communicate to the user when they're when when. A re so a refactoring a definition of a refactoring, right, is something that guarantees that the behavior is preserved, you know, before and after the transformation. And I think with the uh, optional type story that that gets in, that gets interesting. Um, and uh, I think we still have some exploring to do there, but that's also, I think, where the language geeks get really psyched because that's, it's, a, it's a chance to do something really new. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, without any other questions, I don't see anything new showing up in the moderator. Um, I'll take this opportunity again, encourage everyone to uh, try out the editor and send the feedback, man. This team really does listen. They're really great at, at responding quickly and they push out releases so fast, it's hard for me to catch up. Uh, there's a send feedback button in the upper right of the editor. There's dartbug.com, which links you straight to our issue tracking system. That's a good place to put explicit feature requests and uh, any bugs you might have encountered. And then encourage you to participate in the mailing list. Uh, our editors, um, our engineers, or, um, participate there and listen to what you have to say, and a lot of good discussion happens. So please do. This community is very, very good, and our engineers are awesome at listening to what you have. So. Please do give it a shot and let us know. We appreciate it. And on behalf of the whole Dart community, I want to thank all you guys from the editor team and everyone watching at home for joining us today. This is really cool to see the demo, uh, to hear your thoughts, and learn what's coming next. So I really appreciate it. Um, so with that, I want to say thanks, everyone. This video will go up on YouTube. And thanks, and everyone. Have a great weekend. And thank you, Seth, for coordinating. Yeah, my, thanks. My pleasure. Awesome. Bye -bye. Work. Okay.